The Republic Aviation, while known for its P-47 Thunderbolt fighter planes, was developing the U.S. Army's XF-12 Rainbow, a high-performance, high-altitude photo reconnaissance aircraft, during World War II. The plane's purpose was to conduct reconnaissance over Japan and its strongholds. The XF-12 Rainbow was rendered obsolete by contemporary jet engine technology, despite its inventive design and transparent glass nose cone, which came too late to contribute to the war effort. Despite the construction of two successful prototypes, the aircraft was never officially put into production. Bad timing destroyed whatever potential influence the XF-12 may have had on the conflict. In 1943, the conclusion of World War II appeared to be far, since the Axis forces were still serious foes to the Allies. Because of the enormous expanse of the Pacific Ocean, the Pacific War Front required a variety of weapons, including aircraft carriers, battleships, submarines, bombers, fighters, and men. To determine the whereabouts and movements of the Axis of Power, the United States had to conduct photo reconnaissance flights. The vast Pacific Ocean prevented medium-range aircraft from being able to conduct long-range missions, necessitating the development of new long-range, land-based reconnaissance aircraft. The U.S. Army relied on modified fighters and bombers for photographic tasks, neglecting the creation of photo reconnaissance planes. A new specialized aircraft with a peak speed of 400 miles per hour a range of 4,500 miles and the capacity to fly to 40,000 feet was sought by the government in October 1943. With different circumstances, Republic Hughes and Boeing all submitted bids for the contract. With the B-29 Superfortress fulfilling its range criteria, Boeing was a leading manufacturer of long-range aircraft. Renowned for producing swift aircraft, Hughes Maverick was regarded as the best. Nevertheless, the untrustworthy owner Howard Hughes and both businesses had no expertise with large-scale aircraft production. Republic was viewed as a possible rival as it had a tested production facility and modest design skills. Notwithstanding these difficulties, both businesses were able to land contracts, proving their capacity to produce high-performance aircraft. Hughes was given the responsibility of designing the XF-11 Republic, a single-seat, twin-engine fighter-like aircraft. The XF-12 Rainbow was the product of a team led by engineer Alexander Cartvelli that built a four-engine aircraft. But after Hughes' prototype crashed, the project was shelved, leaving Republic as the only contender for fast photo reconnaissance aircraft. A contemporary aircraft with a distinctive design, the XF-12 Rainbow was created by lead engineer Cartvelli. The aircraft was powered by four 28-cylinder Pratt Whitney R4360 engines and had straight wings that tapered slightly. With a tapering nose to tail, the fuselage was precisely round, long, and slender. The translucent, bullet-shaped fuselage nose with a flat pressurized compartment capped by a streamlined plexiglass cone was the most striking feature. This design offered unmatched visibility while reducing drag. Known for his meticulous attention to detail, Brigadier General George W. Goddard designed the beautiful X-12. It was equipped with three Fairchild K-17 aerial cameras, a dark room for film development and printing, and high-intensity photo flash bombs for night lighting. The aircraft's mix of aesthetics, performance, and capabilities was unmatched for its time, making it a popular among aviation fans. The typical style of Cartvelli inspired the design. Piloted by Lowry Al Brabham, the Rainbow was a short yet versatile aircraft that took off for its first flight on February 4, 1946. The flight met the required speed and altitude, but with the conclusion of World War II, the urgency diminished. One of the two Rainbows was damaged in a landing mishap on July 10, 1947, after it was displayed to US AAF pilots. Captain William W. Elliott bounced the plane, breaking off the right side main landing gear. 
The jet burned up fuel for four hours until landing on one gear with slight damage to the two right-wing propellers, but thankfully Elliot retrieved the aircraft. August 12, 1947, saw the maiden flight of the second Rainbow, XF-12, piloted by Oscar Haas. In February 1948, after being outfitted with intended photography equipment, it was flown to Wright Field for operational testing. It was moved to Maroc Field in California six months later. The Army Air Force designated fighter planes with a letter P and reconnaissance planes with the letter F. The classification scheme altered, and the XF-12s were reclassified as XR-12s when the Army Air Force merged to become the Air Force. Operation Bird's Eye, which took place on September 1, 1948, allowed the XR-12 to show off its fast speed and photography capabilities. In 6 hours and 55 minutes, the aircraft reached 40,000 feet and headed eastward toward Long Island. Taking close to 400 pictures on a 325-foot film strip, by taking the greatest number of aerial images on a single flight, the mission shattered records. With a field of vision of 130 square miles, the cutting-edge camera technology was employed during the trip at 50-second intervals. The trip attracted national notice when the photos from the flight were shown at the 1948 Air Force Association Convention and the story was published in Life Magazine's November 1948 edition. The greater capabilities of the new Boeing RB-50 led to the cancellation of the Rainbow program, although data collecting experiments went on. But on November 7, 1948, the Rainbow caught fire, killing two people in the process. This sad accident put an end to whatever hopes Republic had for a commercial version of the XF-12, as well as any interest in developing the RC-2 Rainbow counterpart for military use. Republican planned to build an elongated XF-12 that would have a 435 miles per hour cruise speed and a service ceiling of about 40,000 feet. The RC-2 was built to carry up to 40 people. The Lockheed Constellation and Douglas DC-6 were instead chosen by passenger airlines due to the airplane's unfeasible cost due to its ambitious features. Both could transport 60 to 90 passengers more effectively, but they were slower and had surface ceilings that were lower than 25,000 feet. As amazing as the Rainbow was, contemporary jet engine technology eventually rendered it obsolete. Had Republic's gifted engineers been assigned the responsibility of creating it earlier, the Rainbow would not be among the most forgotten aircraft of today. The Rainbow was almost probably going to see real duty in the U.S. Army Air Forces if it had arrived two years early.